Well, it's story number five and it's Good Friday. We've looked at Palm Sunday, we've looked at Gethsemane last night and now here we are on Good Friday and we've got a really, really, really long story to try and cram in, okay? So as you can see, we're already in modern day Jerusalem. Couple of shout outs just quickly. Again, thanks everyone for subscribing. Thank everyone for watching on YouTube, via Facebook, whatever link you're using. Thanks guys. Special happy birthday mention to one of my friends today. Happy birthday. Sorry, I kind of sort of forgot, but anyway, happy birthday, okay? But I need your help now, guys. We need to get back to ancient Jerusalem. So can you do it with me? Okay, we haven't got palm leaves to wave this time. We're gonna use our hands, our palms of our hands. Ready? So wave our palms, wave our palms. Wow, here we are, back in ancient Jerusalem. And my clothes have changed again, that's amazing. But I do seem to have lost my jacket, so if you see it lying around. But anyway, it's really, really hot here, so we're fine, just like it is back home in Wales at the moment. Well, and as you can see, we're in a garden. Anyone remember the name of the garden? Brilliant, Gethsemane, from our story last night. Well, here we are in the garden of Gethsemane. And this seemed a really, really good place to carry on our Easter story. Because as we remembered from last night, Jesus had been praying with his disciples and the disciples had been falling asleep. And on the last time when he walked the disciples up, he said he was too late because the people were coming to arrest him. And they came in and they took Jesus. Judas was there because he was the man who, as you remember, had a promise to betray Jesus. OK, well, Judas was there. He gave Jesus a kiss because that's how they greeted people in those days. And that was the sign to arrest Jesus. The men came in, Peter being Peter, we all know about Peter, we've had lots of stories about Peter, grabbed one of their swords and attacked one of the guards, cutting off his ear. Jesus said, whoa, that's not how it's going to happen, Peter. He picked up the guard's ear and put it back on his head and healed him. Because Jesus didn't want anyone to suffer. Even though he knew what was going to happen to him, he didn't want anyone else to be injured. And he allowed himself to be taken away as the disciples fled, fearing for their lives. Jesus was taken by the crowds and by the guards to this guy. Do you remember him? He, we met him in the Palm Sunday story. He was the one who told Jesus to stop the crowds shouting out, shouting out Hosanna. And Jesus said to him, well, if they don't sing it, the rocks will sing instead. Well, he was a Pharisee. Jesus went before him and he made up all sorts of lies about Jesus, trying to get the crowds to turn against him. And slowly but surely they did. But he realised he didn't actually have the authority to order Jesus to be killed. He needed to go to someone else more important. So he took Jesus to see this guy. Well, this person here was called Pilate. And Pilate was the ruler, the governor of all the land of Jerusalem and all the area around it. He had the authority to order people and to say whether they lived or whether they died. The Pharisees knew that they needed Pilate's permission before they could get Jesus executed. Well, Pilate talked to Jesus a bit and after a while he realised, particularly on his wife's advice actually, that Jesus was innocent. So Pilate had a problem. He knew he was going to send an innocent man to his death. So what he did was he took a bowl of water and he put his hands in it and he actually washed his hands. And in doing that, he was saying, I'm clean of this. This isn't my problem anymore. This is your problem to deal with. And then he came up with another idea because at that time he had the authority, he had the power to set a prisoner free. He already had one prisoner locked up. His name was... Barabbas. Now, Pilate already had Barabbas locked up in jail and he had a choice. He could either set Barabbas free or he could set Jesus free. So he asked the crowd, who do you want me to set free? Shall I free Barabbas or shall I free Jesus? Imagine how shocked Pilate was when they all started chanting Barabbas. Barabbas. They wanted Barabbas freed. He said, well, what shall I do with Jesus? And as one, they shouted, crucify him. Pilate handed Jesus over to these guys. They were his Roman soldiers and they knew 
how to hurt people really, really badly. I'm not going to go into any of the details. The only thing I will say was in amongst all the pain they caused Jesus, they took some thorns from a bush and made them into a crown. They put it on Jesus' head. And then after all of that, they made him carry his own cross, a massive piece of wood that they put onto his shoulder. And they made him carry it all the way to the place where he was going to be executed. Jesus started the long journey up to this place here. This is called Golgotha. And people believe this is actually where Jesus was crucified. It was a long journey and on the way Jesus stumbled. The Roman soldiers grabbed a man from the crowd called Simon. They put Jesus' cross on Simon's shoulder. And together with Jesus, they both made the long, hard, painful journey right up to the top of the hill called Golgotha. And when they got there, Jesus was crucified. There, on the top of Golgotha, Jesus was crucified. The Roman soldiers nailed him to the cross and stood it up there. You can see there's two other crosses with Jesus. That's because on either side, there were two thieves. One of the thieves shouted abuse at Jesus and mocked him, called him all sorts of things. Whereas the other one, realising Jesus was innocent, actually begged Jesus' forgiveness. He said, will you remember me? Will you remember me when you go up to heaven? And Jesus says, yes, today you'll be with me in paradise. Do you know, lots of things happen when Jesus is on the cross. Lots of horrible things. But I want you to remember three things that Jesus said when he was up there. The first thing he said was he actually asked God to forgive the people that were killing him. He said, Father, forgive them. They don't quite understand what they're doing. The second thing is he said, I've paid the debt now in full. There's nothing left to pay. And the third thing he said just before he died was, it is finished. And you know, if you remember those three things, you remember a lot more than a lot more adults remember. In fact, you remember everything about Christianity. Because Christians believe lots of things. They read the Bible, they believe lots of things. But actually, you can sum up, I believe anyway, you can sum up all of what Christianity believes in those three things Jesus said on the cross. Because what he said was that God can forgive us. And just as Jesus asked forgiveness for those people who were killing him, we can ask God to forgive us for everything we've done wrong. Okay, sometimes we do things wrong. Sometimes it's hard to say sorry. Sometimes it's ask, hard to ask people to forgive us. But we can always ask God to forgive us when we do things wrong. The second thing you can remember from it is that Jesus said the debt is paid in full. What that means is that Jesus died for you and for me. This Good Friday, we remember that as Jesus died on the cross, this is what Christians believe and what the Bible says, that as Jesus died on the cross, he paid like the bill, the debt, the bill for everything I've done wrong, for everything I ever will do wrong, which is amazing. He paid there on the cross. It's been paid and not just paid a little bit, but been paid in full. And the final thing he said was it's finished. And what that basically means is that Jesus didn't kind of do a half job. Do you know that moment when your mums and dads ask you to tidy your bedroom? And you say, yes, I've tidied my bedroom. And they said, you've completed it? Yes, yes, I've tidied it completely. And then they go up and check and you haven't finished the job. Well, Jesus didn't do that. What Jesus did, he did it in full. The job was done. We don't have to do all the things to try and earn our way and try and get into heaven by doing good works and everything like that. We do them, yes. But the way we get to heaven is we believe in what Jesus did on Good Friday. We believe that God can forgive us. We believe that Jesus paid for everything that I can't pay. And we believe that he did it. And that was it. It was finished. And you know, if you remember those three things, you remember a lot more than a lot of people do. Because that is the story of Easter. Now, here I am, 
still stuck in ancient uh, Jerusalem. I almost forgot where I was then. I've been here so long. So can you help me get back, please? Because we need to get back now to modern Jerusalem. Okay, so let's do our wavy palms. Wavy palms. What an amazing story. Thanks for all your help getting me back to modern day Jerusalem. Can I just apologise as well? Any adults thinking he left some bits out? We were cramming an awful lot of story into a small section. Otherwise, we'd still be doing this tomorrow. Okay, now, I want you to tune in on Easter Sunday while you're eating your chocolate eggs because the story doesn't end there. I know we said that Jesus said it is finished and after that he died on the cross. But thank God it doesn't finish on the cross. We've got to find out what happens next. So tune in on Easter Sunday, please, and we'll find the next amazing part of this story. Okay, till then, be safe and we'll see you Sunday. Thanks, guys. Bye.